my loves welcome back to my channel my name is Bronwyn and I am a skincare specialist by trade with eight plus years of career level experience I feel like we're going on like the ninth year by now but honestly I kind of stopped keeping track um today's video is a review on a Korean SPF and my whole routine is like upside down because I've never reviewed an SPF like this before. Today we are reviewing the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. So this is the product right here. I haven't opened it yet. I haven't used it yet before. I literally just got these in the other day. I did a huge Korean SPF haul because I want to just switch it up and try out new fun things, especially SPF sticks, which offer a way of reapplication throughout the day. So this one really caught my interest. You can see it is in stick form which I'm really excited about, but I'm so used to using cream SPFs and using it as my day cream where I mix my foundation into it that I don't know what I should do for foundation now because I don't actively wear foundation. So I guess what I'm gonna do, um, I guess what I'm gonna do, I already applied my base skincare, so I used my, my Claire Supple Preparation Unscented Toner, I used my uh, Claire's Freshly Juiced Vitamin Drop Serum, and wow, I only use Claire's products today. And then I used my Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Cream just a little bit because I feel like this probably won't give me the moisture that my dry AF skin desperately needs all the time. Um, so that is kind of my base, and I guess the true way to use this would probably be to apply your base makeup first because like the whole purpose of this is to have something that you can put over makeup and reapply throughout the day. So let's go ahead and just do a concealer method. This way I will still get the amount of coverage that I want, which basically just balances out my my skin tone and dark circles and any redness I have. I always have redness around like kind of the corners of my face. So around the nose, I always get red, the inner cheeks, um, any areas that I have clogged pores that are getting angry. And over the past few months, I've developed a new place for getting clogged pores, which is um, around my temples. And I, I feel like I go through waves of getting this type of acne or clogged pores, I guess it's more so than acne. And apparently, like the last time I had a clogged pore problem in that area was when I was living in South Korea, and I never had it before at that point in my life. So I remember like researching like why you get acne in that area, because it was totally new to me. Like I'm more accustomed to getting acne on my cheeks. I've always kind of developed acne there and around my, my chin and jaw. Which, um, if you know by like Chinese medicine standards, um, cheek acne is often in correlation with your digestive system and colon. And I have IBS, so it makes sense that I would get most of my breakouts around that area. And then around the jaw and chin is hormones, which obviously makes sense. Every woman gets acne in those areas. It's just kind of like commonplace. So to have acne breakouts around my temples was super unusual to me, which apparently to get acne or clogged pores around like your upper cheekbones in this temple area, from what I remember, means air pollution. So your lungs, any pollutants in the air. And the air in Toronto has been really bad the past month or so. So yeah, kind of makes sense. So then I always conceal around this area because I also always get red here as well. It's kind of the one thing that sucks as you get older you start to get thinner skin and as such you start to develop like redness in areas you never used to have before so I'm hoping my application method for this SPF will be decent and not disrupt concealer too much. If it does, I'm screwed because I'm on a time limit right now. 
Okay, so my foundation is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and start applying the SPF. It's a moisture sun stick with eight types of hyaluronic acid, which is so cool to see because that is more so a Japanese um, formulation technique than Korean. So it's really interesting to see that they're adopting um, different methods of application. I'm not seeing the ingredients on the actual packaging um, in English at least. So that's, that's interesting. There are directions in English. How to use at the last stage of your skincare apply a suitable amount on the face and gently pat in so it doesn't say anything about makeup but i guess we'll see so let's look it up isn't she hyaluronic acid i hate when websites don't share the ingredients like isn't that isn't that like super important? <laughs> so da, 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 they highlighted their main key ingredients on their website, the Isn't Tree English website. So they bolded niacinamide, which is great to see because that can help prevent clogged pores. They have butylin glycol in there. And if you guys remember and know me, butylin glycol is one of my favorite moisturizers slash hydrators in skincare because it's a non-acid way of hydrating and moisturizing the skin. It's one of my, like anything that has butylin glycol in it, I love. Um, a ton of ingredients that I would not know what they are. Um, da, 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 da. Bark extract from a, some sort of tree. Uh, more plant waters and plant extracts. Glycerin, hibiscus extract, green tea, aloe. More plant extracts, eight types of hyaluronic acid. Okay, so looks pretty decent. So let's go ahead and test it out over my makeup. I'll zoom in for you guys. All right, so this is what my skin looks like. I have a couple of uh, clogged pores that are starting to become pimples. I didn't apply foundation here because I never really do. So let's go ahead and sweep this over. Oh, you really have to push firmly. <laughs> it's removing my makeup. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Like it's, it's not, it's not making it look terrible, but it's definitely pulling and moving it around the skin. So I guess this application would maybe be better if you were using like a tinted and not a not an isolated application process, but it's not, it's not lifting it. So the product itself is, looks the same, but it's definitely moving it around my skin. I don't have any concealer on my forehead, just, it seems like a pretty thick consistency. So I'm not really inclined to put it over my eyes because it's probably gonna burn like hellfire, but I, I kind of like it. Like, <laughs> It's kind of like nice to just be able to like not get my hands that dirty. It's a bit awkward over the chest area. I think I'm going to use my body SPF, but I just did a full coat over my entire face and the product itself has not picked up my foundation. Like it looks clean AF. So now it says to pat into the skin. When I look at my skin overall like it really hasn't disrupted my makeup too much like it definitely spread it around so if you are applying this the way that I did and you usually just target conceal you might have a problem with coverage but if you generally apply like a tinted moisturizer or like a really lightweight foundation then it's definitely gonna be nice it doesn't feel super greasy my face doesn't look super shiny like it actually feels really nice like it feels as if i applied a primer on my on my skin you know like it doesn't feel like spf it feels like a, a primer what's nice too is that it like it's not crumbling with my skincare like it really just feels like I put a primer, like a makeup layer of primer on. 
this is actually really nice so far wow it did push my makeup into my dry skin flakes so it looks a little cakey right there but overall like my my skin actually looks really good like it <laughs> actually looks really good <gasps> like i feel poreless to a degree i think i actually really really love this so i'm gonna take this with me today and we're gonna reapply later on i actually don't even feel like i need to use any powder but i am gonna move forward and use my uh, contour and blush which i normally do every single day and then in the next four hours i will reapply hello everyone okay it has been five hours i you know how like people when they're reviewing things and how long they last over a period of time they usually show like their phone to prove the time well i forgot about that it's been so long since i did a time-based review but um essentially it's been five hours um, I went and did my photo shoot at the studio and I also got some beautiful pictures of all the SPFs that I hauled from Korea So I'm really excited to post those on my Instagram If you're not already following me on my Instagram, make sure you do check that out I post there every single day so you can see daily content there aside from weekly content here Otherwise, it's been five hours I am due to reapply my SPF even though I'm inside for the rest of the day um, It's for purposes of testing its reapplication process um, this is how my skin looks right now. I'll try to zoom in for you guys, but overall like my skin Still looks pretty good for having an SPF on for five hours. I have to say I feel like this gives a somewhat Satin finish to the skin. I wouldn't say matte because it's definitely not matte at all But it's not dewy either. So I really am loving the finish. I think it's really great for summer like this is actually amazing for the summer season like I'm not oily like I'm a little bit oily in my t-zone but I usually like like my skin to have a little bit of a natural shine to it over the day but like it looks pretty good I still feel like I overall look fairly poreless especially for how my skin usually is like this really does smooth out the pores I'm so surprised so Let's see how this goes for ruining my makeup. I have highlighter on, I have blush on, and I have contour on. So let's go ahead and start sweeping over the skin. Sorry if you hear something in the background. My boyfriend's just in the middle of a meeting. So it is now picking up my makeup. You can definitely see my makeup on the product. You can see my blush. I think the most important areas are like the high points of the face as well. So you gotta make sure that you get there. Like it, like you can feel there's like product going on your skin, but it doesn't look oily at all. And. The funny thing is, I was always so skeptical to purchase these types of sticks because I assumed they would make you look really, really oily. Like, it was just, like, such an assumption, though. Like, something about it scares me. Like, I, it feels like I'm going to clog my pores like crazy. But at the same time, it's so like not oily looking that it's hard to assume that. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Should I apply it over my eyebrows? I kind of don't want to. <laughs> I guess like my brow bone, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of ruining my eyeshadow a little bit, I guess. But not really. So you can see it definitely picked up a lot on my stick, but my skin, like makeup wise, it doesn't look bad at all. So I feel like if you generally wear a very natural kind of base makeup, um, you can easily get away with reapplying this no problem like my blush overall is still 
generally in place as well as my contour on my nose i feel like it smudged my contour a little bit so if you usually have a more refined nose contour like i do um, you're definitely going to have to bring something to touch that up uh, for highlighter though i feel like i'm noticing my highlighter kind of just got smudged all over my face like it's not at all there anymore really it's kind of just everywhere which i don't really mind like it gives a nice dewy finish to the skin um it doesn't feel super heavy which i like and it doesn't look oily like it looks kind of like it looks like a satin finish it's not matte but definitely not oily so a satin finish is a good way of putting it not dewy either definitely would not say this is dewy on this skin but reapplication wise this went pretty pretty good if you're someone who wears heavy makeup more often you probably would not be able to get away with like a seamless reapplication um bring something with you on the go for touching up your contour because i feel like contour and highlighter are the ones that got messed up the most um my highlighter pretty much disappeared and my contour on my nose specifically is just kind of gone overall i'm going to rank the in isn't tree hyaluronic acid airy sun stick uh, 10 out of 10 this is amazing um this is probably going to be my new daily spf for the summer season if it doesn't break me out uh, generally i can't tell after the first day if something breaks me out so if this did end up irritating my skin in any way long term wise or clogging my pores or breaking me out i will let you guys know in the description box of this video and in the comment section so make sure you check those areas out to know what happened to my skin later on down the road if anything happened otherwise if you don't see anything there stating any of those issues then it just means it's pretty much a perfect spf for me i am obsessed this is a summertime must-have like my skin is overall feels great it feels hydrated it feels moisturized it doesn't feel like tight or pulling in any area and it's not oily or greasy or feels like it has too much skincare on so 10 out of 10 if you guys have a dry dehydrated skin type and are looking for an spf that's super super easy to reapply throughout the day i am definitely suggesting 100 percent the isn't tree hyaluronic acid airy sun stick spf 50 this is a must now i know there's a lot of drama coming out of south korean skincare products and skincare products in general that are spfs um due to some of the manufacturers in south korea um supplying their brand with incorrect spf ratings obviously i'm not an independent laboratory that can test the effectiveness of this spf but going off the fact that spfs can range anywhere between the listed spf 50 to a low end spf like 1920 the fact alone that you're able to reapply it you can take control of the situation right so even if say for example this is stated as an spf 50 but actually after like it's been in the package and being exposed to different temperatures maybe the formulation degraded over time to an spf 19 no problem if you're applying it every two hours you're still safe and protected you can throw it in your bag on the go you can reapply it over makeup and it is fine so 10 out of 10 recommending this no matter what especially if you have a dry dehydrated skin type and are looking for something that's going to be great in the summer season that's not going to be too oily on the skin or too drying on the skin thank you guys so much for watching remember to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed this vlog style skincare review video comment down below and let me know what is your current favorite spf for the summer season i would love to know your guys' recommendations of course hit the subscribe button with the notification bell turned on you guys a lot of you watching my videos aren't subscribed and YouTube only recommends my videos to my subscribers at 3% of my audience. So everyone that's subscribed to me, only 3% are actually getting suggested my videos on their homepage. Um, so you can change that by simply turning on notifications, making sure that you get to see my videos every single week. And if you choose to watch them or not, that's great. As long as you know that you're not missing out. There are so many times that people come into my youtube channel and they're like oh my god i'm so happy to see you're making videos again i'm like i never stopped youtube just hates me literally youtube hates me so um hit that notification bell please if you want to see my videos again and of course check me out on my instagram account i'm uploading every single day there so you can stay up to date on what i'm getting up to on the day today and if you like vlog style videos i have weekly vlogs on my vlogging channel linked in the description box below so definitely check that out as well i love you guys so much and i will see you next week Bye.